today we're going to talk on the Sabbath. We're going to speak on the Sabbath. And um, we're going to not only speak on that uh, today, but we're going to speak on that, I believe, in the next couple of Saturdays. There's, there's a couple of layers when you talk about the Sabbath. And, and I do understand that um, a lot of people teach different things um, when, according to the Sabbath. They teach that. Some assemblies teach this. Some teach that. But we're going to be led by the Ruach, and I'm going to teach what, you know, um, what the Most High says, all right? And so we're going to, uh, at that point, we're going to say, as the Bible says, let every man be persuaded. Uh, so at that point, so, but we're going to teach a series, the Sabbath series, and uh, we're going to start today with the creation account. Hallelujah. And next week, we'll get in, probably get into the uh, the covenant uh, with the Israel um, at the mountain from that standpoint. And then we're going to get into uh, understanding when Yahusha came on the earth with the Sabbath. So we're going to be uh, coming from different directions on the Sabbath. But I feel like this is a, um, essential to understand the Sabbath. This is something that we do every week. And we need to know why we're doing it. We need to know the meaning of it. We need to know where it came from. Hallelujah. So we're going to attempt to teach that today. All right. So we're going to start our Sabbath series today. I'm excited about it. I'm excited for the mystery of God to learn and for us to walk in what Yah is saying. All right. So the Sabbath, the Sabbath. So let me ask. So when is the Sabbath, Miss Bacow? When's, when's the Sabbath? Seventh day. The seventh day. The seventh day. Seventh day. Seventh day Sabbath. All right. So what, what is the purpose of the Sabbath, Mishpika? Rest. It's a day of, of rest, a day of rest before Yah. So the Sabbath, did that start? When did that start? Did that start when, when um, our ancestors stood at the foot of Mount Sinai and, uh, and the commandments was given to Moses? Did it start then? No. When did it start? When y'all created the whole universe, the heavens and the earth. All right. That sounds good, Elisa. But the Bible says this. First, first Thessalonians 5 and 21 says what? We got to what? We got to prove all things, right? Now, it's good to say that. That sounds good. But we're going to have to prove it. So that's what we're going to do today. All right. All right. We're going to prove all things, Ms. Fika. All right. The Sabbath series, the creation account. All right. We find, as Alyssa said, and she brought out so eloquently, um, we find the law of first mention. Uh, the law of first mention of the Sabbath in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3. Alyssa, why don't you go ahead and if you could, can you read that for me? We find the law, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day. He did, hold on, wait a minute, he did what? He rested. He rested on the seventh day from what? All his work. All right, read. Which he had made. Okay, read. And God blessed the seventh day and he did sanctified what? it. He did what? He, bl he blessed the seventh day. And what? And sanctified Sanctified. Come on, you sounded churchy right there. <laughs> you sounded the apostolic church right there. I like that. What does that mean? What does that mean, Mr. Kyle, when he says that he sanctified? What does that mean, Mr. Kyle? Set it apart. Set it apart. Set it apart. That's right, Emma Stone. That's right. He set it apart. That's right, Nehemiah. He set that date apart. He set it aside as as what? What's the what's the Hebrew word for sanctified? Him? He did what? When you set something apart in Hebrew, what's that called? Kodesh. 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 Hallelujah. Praise Yah. So he Kodesh that day, which means he set that day apart. That day was more special than any other day. All the other six days, this day was set apart to Yah. He hallowed, as it says. He hallowed this day. Okay, continue to read, Alyssa. Because... That in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created, Yah created and made. So, so basically in the creation account, Yah put work in. He created uh, 
um, the, the fishes of the seas, the fowls of the air. He created the trees, the herbs, and, and one most important day, um, one of the days that's very dear to us as Hebrews is the fourth day. Why is the fourth day uh, has great significance to us as Hebrews? Why is it so important, the fourth day? What did he create on that day that was so important to us? Anybody know? What was created on the fourth day, Bishop God? Sun, moon, and stars. There you go. There you go. Thank you, Okote Tracy. It was the sun, the moon, and the stars. Why is that so important? Why is that day important? What is that day connected to according to our belief and our faith? The Moedims. There you go. There you go. The Moedims. So Genesis 1 and 14 talks about the Moedims, the signs, the signs that these things were put in the sky as signs and for seasons for us. The signs, that word signs in the Hebrew is oath. O-T-H. And that word seasons in the Hebrew is moed. Hallelujah. So it, it was put in, as, in the sky as, as signs and seasons for us. Hallelujah. And one thing about it, when we understand the, uh, the new moons, uh, we understand that our, that our ancestors, they didn't have a calendar like we had. They didn't have a calendar and they weren't able to look at this day and know this was the third and this and that. They was able to understand through looking at the moon. And so uh, they understand a new month uh, or a new moon was actually uh, stated by what they seen from the moon. They saw when the moon had a little slitter in it, that let them to know that this was a new moon, which means it was the first day of the month. Hallelujah. So it also we understand that the moon actually told us the seasons for the feast days as well. So they were putting in the sky for signs unto us to understand. Y'all didn't trust man. He didn't put it in man's hand, but he put what he put in the sky, what he created from the beginning of time as a witness unto him. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? He's very systematic. And he's very secular in what he does. He has a pattern how he operates, all right? So praise the name of the Most High, Yah. Yah, he rested from all his labor and he sanctified and he quote and he set apart that day, the seventh day. Hallelujah. Let's build some traction, Mishra We understand that when Yah created Adam, he created him in his image, in his image, hallelujah. Meaning he created him to model everything that Yah was in the earth. Hallelujah. Yah put Adam in place to have dominion. What, did, what does it mean to have dominion, Mishpaka? He put him in the garden to have dominion. What does it mean to have dominion? I know Rob Parsley preaches dominion. You know, dominion kept me. But what does it mean when, when Yah put Adam in there with dominion in the garden? To yes. To yes, 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 he gave him dominion, which means he placed them over. He gave him, in, in a sense, he gave him power in that area. Hallelujah. Total control. Hallelujah. Yes, Emma Stone, Mama Stone. Yes, total control. He had power in that area. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all put Adam in place to have dominion in the garden that he placed in, in him in. He was, in a sense, Mr. God, a little Elohim in the garden. We even understand that even though the law was not put on tablets at this point, all right? The, the, the Mishraka or, or the Yahudim or, or Israel have not yet to this point came to the foot of the rock in the marriage covenant with Yah, okay? So this is way before then, okay? So the, it wasn't on tablets at this time. There was a oral law established. Yes, a oral law that was established in the earth from that time, from creation, through each covenant that Yah made, it was progressive. We understand the covenants from Edenic covenant to the Davidic covenant and to the renewed and repaired covenant. Yah gave more instructions. As each covenant went on, um, Yah began to give more instructions. That's what Torah means, right? In the simplest form, Torah means 
instruction. So as men begin to go on and as they begin to come on the earth and they begin to understand Yah, more instructions he would give them. There, there was no sense to put the whole counsel of everything that Yah had in him at one time. Men had to progressively, they had to progressively learn the ways of Yah. Now, does it not make sense? Now, let me jump real quick. Now, let me jump into a little rabbit hole. All right. I'm going to jump in the rabbit hole and I'm going to come out. When we understand Acts 15 and we understand the Jerusalem Council, we understand during that time that Paul and Barnabas had great arguments and they had great debates with the Jews at that time or the Yahudim, or let's say like this, with the Pharisees and the circumcision party that we find in Acts 11 and 2. So when he got into a debate with them and he went to go see James and Peter, what did James tell uh, Paul and Barnabas with the Gentiles or the scattered uh, northern kingdom? What did he tell them to do? Listen, he said, let's not put what? Let's not, let's not put the whole law on their neck. We only going to put everything on them at one time. There's no sense to do that. You know, let them gradually, gradually come into this thing. And as they go, to the synagogue, and as they go to the temple every week, guess what? They're going to learn about who? They're going to learn about what? The last month. They're going to learn about Torah. Excellent, Nate. So they didn't put the whole council. This is what, this is what the Pharisees and the chief priests and scribes wanted to do. That was their formula. But y'all don't put everything on you at one time. The Bible says this even with Abraham. And I'm jumping a little bit, but I'm going to jump out. Even with Abraham, the Bible said that Abraham uh, trusted Yah. He trusted his word. And it was counted to him for what? It was counted to him for righteousness because he believed Yah. Once he believed Yah and it was counted to him for righteousness, what happened next? Yah put him into covenant after his belief system. So Yah does not put everything on you at one time. He progressively, he gradually lets you understand him and understand his word. Hallelujah, y'all with me so far? Hallelujah, praise the name of the Most High Yah. So, so with that being said, um, the Adam and Eve keep the Sabbath. What say you, Mishpaka? Now, let me, let me ask. Some of the Mr. on here. Um, I, I gotta ask you. We gonna we gonna cut to the chase. No chaser. We gonna just go straight down. You know what I'm saying? Down to jug it down. I need to know. Did Adam and Eve? With that being said, just so far of what we have talked and what we have stated, did Adam and Eve keep the Sabbath? What say you, Nate? Yes. Yes. You say yes. All right. On the Buckeye on the House State Buckeye Day. Nate says yes. All right. Let me I ask you. Yes. Let me ask you, Ernestine Dewberry. What what say you? I say yes because we all supposed to have the day of rest, and if he's keeping what y'all said in the garden, he should have that. They should have that day of rest. All right. All right. Ernestine Dewberry from Sugarland, Texas. She said yes. All right. Yeah. Let me let me ask you. Who was that, Brandon? You said what? Yeah, I say yeah. I don't think so because you said he put, he gave he gave them everything moderately, slowly. I don't know about that. So you don't know? Okay, good, good. Annette, Annette says she don't know. That's good. Let's hold that thought. All right. Let me ask some of the some of the babies on here. Um, let me ask you, Nicole. You still on here? Because I can't see everybody. You still on here? Nikki, you still on here, Nicole? Yes. Okay, let me ask you. <laughs> let me ask you a question. It ain't no right or wrong. It's no right or wrong. All right, because I want to make sure. I say no. But I want to make sure we're on the same page. So, N Nicole, Nikki, did, did, did Adam and Eve keep the Sabbath? No. They didn't keep. Okay, you say no. Good. Mama Stone, you was talk you were saying something? I said no. You say no. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So hey, no, who said no? Uh, this is Lawrence. Because the tour wasn't given to Adam Eve, was it? Amen. All right. All right. So that's that's good. We're, 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 we're divided. Some say yes. 
Some say no. All right. Let's continue to dig. Let's build traction. Mark 227. Um, uh, Ak, uh, Ak, Nate, you, are you able to read that for me? Yes, sir. Uh, Mark 227. And he said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. All right. So Stop right there. Mm -hmm. So Mark 227. This is Yahusha. This is Yahusha talking. Yahusha was talking to his people during that time. He said, he's talking to the Jews. He's talking to his people. The Yahudin. I hate saying Jews. He was talking to the Yahudin. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for Sabbath. So the Sabbath was made at creation for man. Not waiting until Israel got out of Egyptian slavery. Now, this, this is, a, uh, <laughs> this is a, a thing amongst Christianity, where Christianity teaches that the law was given out Mount Sinai, all right? So therefore, at that time, it was given to, uh, the Sabbath was given to them because they was in cruel bondage um, in Egypt. So therefore, he had to give them coming out. He had to give them a Sabbath because they didn't have a Sabbath in Egypt. That's the thought of a lot of Christian apostles and leaders that teach that. They worked seven days. They had no rest in Egypt. So due to law, he gave them rest. But we are building we're establishing something here now. We're establishing something that Yah, that Yah created Adam. Before he created Adam, he created Adam. Adam on the sixth day, which means that Yah worked, as we stated, six days in creation. And on the sixth day, he created man. The next day, he rested. The Sabbath was made for man <laughs> and not man for the Sabbath. Y'all get where I'm going? If not, we're going to continue to build traction. So let's no, get back. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> Let's get back. Let's get back to Adam. Let's get back to Adam, because yeah, like I said, a, a, a lot, good. a lot of pastors and Christianity. The reason why they teach this, the reason why they teach that, uh, that the Sabbath, uh, only was given after they came out of bondage, because they don't want to recognize that there was a law. Yah Almighty, Yah's law was in place. Before Mount Sinai, before the tablets, his law was established. Don't take my word. We're going to build. We're going to prove that. But Christianity does not want to admit that because if they admit that law, the law was in operation from the beginning, then their whole theology is messed up because they don't want to believe the law. They don't want to keep the law. So this is a uh, understanding of them to create. The fact that the law was not existent until the tablets, but we building right now. We're gonna prove all. So Adam that. and Eve kept the law. So Adam and Eve okay. kept the law. Well, let me. Let's I mean, build. I'm excuse me, the Sabbath. Let let let's build. Let's build. I, don't mm -hmm. don't think we gonna we have something. The scripture, uh, we have something called interpretive methodology. What does that mean, Mr. Cox? Interpretive methodology. That means that the scripture, scripture interpret scripture. Yes, sir. We're going to let the scriptures speak. This ain't me talking. We're going to let the scriptures talk. All right? So let's go. That's good. Uh, Zakane Stone. Hallelujah. Genesis 2 and 15. All right? Uh, I need a reader. Somebody that has not read. Somebody read for me that has not read before. I need a bold soldier. Just read for me real quick. I and the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Okay, what cause, it all right, stop right there. So Genesis 2 and 15, we proven all things. And Elohim, Yahuwah took the man. This is after he made him, right? After he formed him, after he breathed in him, after and he formed him and everything and made him a little Elohim. Gave him the same creative power that he had in heaven. He has it now in earth. Now, he's a little Elohim walking. All right. 
and he placed them into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Mishraqah, what does this mean, dress it? What did he mean by he put them in the garden to dress it? What does that mean? To enhance it? Okay, you say to enhance it, cuz. All right. Put it in order. Else? Huh? Somebody else? Is that Naria? Did you say something? I said, yes. I said to put it in order. To put it in order. All right. All right. Okay, cousin, you said to do what? To enhance it. And Naria said to put it in order. All right. Anyone else want to interject on that? When you put them in the garden to dress it. Now, here we all said to uh, say it again. To put it in order. To put, put it in it, order. Because, you okay. know, we grow wild and they just grow. But okay. Put, what, make sure one plant's not choking out the other plant. Got you. To all put right. it in the proper place. Because said it has it. All right. So let's see. Let's see what that word dress means. All right, let's go to Hebrew, to the, to the Hebrew. That word in the Hebrew, dress, means is abai, abai. And according oh. to Strong's H5647, y'all see my cursor in my mouse? Y'all see that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, the prim it means to work. Oh. <laughs> it means to work. In that context, <laughs> to serve, to keep. How about over here? To work, to serve, to labor, to, serve, to work, be tilled the land. So Adam was put in the garden by Yah to work. <laughs> so a Sabbath is needed after. You do what? Work. 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 <laughs> After you work. All right. Six All days right. shall a man work. After the sixth day, they shall do what? Rest. Rest. Y'all made man yeah. on what day? The six. The six. And the next day was a what? Rest. Oh, day of rest. rest. Day of rest. So, Adam qualified from what y'all established in creation, he qualified for a Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's work, Mishpika. Let, don't take my word for it. We're going to let the scripture, we're going to let scripture and scholarship prove this. All right? All right, let's dig. Let's, let's, let's see. I know a lot of our Christian brothers and sisters, hallelujah, they don't fool with the apocrypha. Uh, because they say it's not canonized. First of all, who is the authority of the canonization? I believe it's the Catholic Church, right? The Catholic Church. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. They, so, I think they did make the canon laws. Yes. So in 1611, when you look at and Salim has one, he has one. He has. Uh, I think he has a King James, but. If you look at the original King James 1611 original Bible, guess what was in there? The Apocrypha. The Apocrypha. <laughs> All those books was in there. But the Catholic Church took them out. Oh. It makes you wonder, oh. why did they take them? Why did they put them in there and take them out? But that's a whole rabbit hole. We'll, we'll talk about that in the future. We'll teach on that in the future. All right? So... Let's see what the apocrypha is saying about the Sabbath and creation. We already established already that Adam was in the garden to work. And if he worked, he qualified for a Sabbath. All right. So I need a good, strong reader with, that can read with endurance. Who can read this for me? I don't want, I don't want to pick up. Hey, I'll read. Was that Nehemiah? Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. And the angel of the presence spoke to Moshe according to the word of Yahuwah, saying, write the complete history of the creation, how in six days Yahuwah Elohim finished all his works and all that he created. 
and kept Sabbath on the seventh day and sanctified it for all ages and appointed it as a sign for all his works. For on the first day, he created the heavens, which are above and the earth and the waters and all and all the Ruachoth, which serve before him, the angels of the presence and the angels of sanctification and the angels of the Ruach of fire and the angels of the Ruach of the winds and the angels of the Ruach of the clouds and the end of darkness and of snow and of hail and of hoar frost and the angels of the voices and of the thunder and of the lightning and the angels of the Ruach of of cold and of heat and of winter and of spring and of autumn and of summer and of all the real coast of his creatures, which are in heaven and in earth. Thank you, Nehemiah. So this is the apocryphal book, Jubilees. And, and a lot of the apocryphal books, for those who don't know or understand what apocrypha is, again, I, I established that these books were originally in the 1611 King James Version, and they were taken out by the Catholic Church. But um, a lot of these uh, apocryphal books, they they um, they give you more detail of the stories that we see um, in the uh, King James versions. Sometimes the stories um, in the King James versions are kind of choppy. All right, so a lot of times the apocrypha fills in the choppiness of what we see in the uh, King James Version. So here, this is um, the angels of the presence. These are the angels that the Most High or the, the Malachim that the Most High has made. And, um, and she's speaking to Moses and they're giving um, the account of what happened um, in creation. So they're telling the story. So what you're reading right now and what Nehemiah is going to read, he's reading a story uh, from these angels that were created by Yah. Um, they were angels of the presence, and they were set apart angels that had a purpose by Yah, all right? And you're going to see as, as Nehemiah reads that these angels worked. <laughs> they weren't just sitting there as we see on TV, sitting there, sitting in heaven or sitting in the Shamaim, floating around with white robes on and playing harps. They had jobs. They were working. Y'all put them where everything in creation worked. It had a purpose. All right. So Nehemiah, just wanted to give you all a backdrop of what, you're, what Nehemiah is reading. Go ahead, Nehemiah. Jubil Jubilees 2, 3, and 6. Read some more of it. He created the abysses and the darkness, evening and night, and the light, dawn and day, which he has prepared in the knowledge of his heart. <laughs> And thereupon we saw his works and praised him and lauded before him on account of all his works. For seven great works did he create on the first day. And on the second day, he created the expanse in the midst of the waters. And the waters were divided on that day. Half of them went up above, and half of them went down below the expanse that was in the midst over the face of the yeah. whole earth. And this was the only work Elohim created on the second day. And on the third day, he commanded the waters to pass from off the face of the whole earth into one place. And the dry land to appear. And the waters did so as he commanded them. And they retired from off the face of the earth into one place outside of this expanse. And the dry land appeared. As you see, this is the angels. They're telling the, the story of the creation account. We see it from the King James Version. But this is the angels talking about exactly what happened from their perspective and from their viewpoint. And this is what they're saying. They're breaking down what happened day by day. All right? We're building. There's, there's the, a method to my madness of reading this. All right? We're going to see in a minute. All right? Continue to read uh, Nehemiah. And on that day, he created from all the seas according to their separate gathering places and all the rivers and the gatherings of the waters in the mountains and on all the earth and all the lakes 
and all the dew of the earth and the seed which is sown mm -hmm. and all sprouting things and fruit bearing trees and trees of the wood and the garden of Eden in Eden and all. These four great works Elohim created on the third day. And on the fourth day, he created the sun and the moon and the stars. Mm -hmm. He set them in the expanse of the heaven to give light upon all the earth and to rule over the day and the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And Elohim appointed the sun to be a great sign on the earth for days and for the uh, Shabbatoth and for months and for feasts mm -hmm. and for, for years. Oh, wait a minute. For what? And for months and for feasts All and right. for years and for Shabbatoth of years and for jubilees and for all seasons of the years. And it divides the light from the darkness and for and for prosperity, that all things may prosper, which shoot and grow on the earth. These three kinds he made on the fourth day. And on the fifth day, he created great sea monsters in the depths of the waters. Mm -hmm. For these were the first things of the flesh that were created by his hands. The fish of every, the fish and everything that moves in the waters and everything that flies, the mm -hmm. birds and all their kind. And the sun rose above them and, uh, to prosper them. And above everything that was on the earth, everything that shoots out of the earth and all the fruit bearing trees and all flesh. Listen to them. Listen to the angels giving the account, giving their story of what happened. Their account is more in depth. All right. Go ahead, Nehemiah. And the sun rose above them to prosper them and above everything that was on earth, everything, everything that shoots out of the earth and all fruit, fruit bearing trees and all flesh. These three kinds he created on the fifth day. And on the sixth day, he created all the animals of the earth all the cattle and everything that moves on the earth. And after all this, he created man, a man and a woman created he them. And he, and gave him dominion over all that is upon the earth. Uh, and, and you see and that, then, you see that in Apocrypha, you see, he gave him what dominion over all that is upon the earth. All right, continue to read the Nehemiah. And in the seas and over everything that flies, and over beasts, and over cattle, and over everything that moves on the earth, and over the whole earth, and over all this he gave him dominion. And these four kinds he created on the sixth day. And there were there and there were all together two and twenty kinds. And he finished all his work on the sixth day, all that is in the heavens and on earth, and in the seas, and in the abyss, in the abysses, and in the light and in the darkness and in everything uh-huh all right jubilees 2 18 and 19 read that for me please uh, real quick can i can i just intervene just real quick on this yes go ahead who was the angels talking to and it and the word abyss is you is is plural so there's more than one abyss so i have to read this uh i'll see if you can address that so i can marinate a little bit for me. All right, we'll come back to that because I want I want to stay on my point. So we'll okay. come back to that at the end. I can read. And he right. gave us a great sign, the Sabbath, that we would work six days, but guard the Sabbath on the seventh day from all work. And all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification, these two great classes he has bidden us to guard the Sabbath with him in heaven and on earth. Listen, now, we heard the whole story of these angels speaking, the angels of the presence and the angels of the sanctification telling the story to Moshe, speaking to Moshe of the account. Now, look what he says here, here. And he says, he gives us a great sign on the Shabbat that we will work six days, but guard the Shabbat on the seventh day from all work. These angels was working as well. They were created by Yah. So therefore, they was working too as well. But on the seventh day, they did what? They took a Sabbath. And all the angels of the presence and all the angels of sanctification, these different classes of angels, 
of the presence and the angels of sanctification. These two great classes, he has bidden us to guard the Shabbat with him in heaven and on earth. So what does that mean? What are you saying, Moray Stone? I'm saying that even the angels that were created by Yah, they were required to take a Sabbath. Those angels in heaven and in the earth, meaning that while we are taking a rest, that the whole heavenly host of heaven in the Shamayim, they're doing what right now? Taking a rest. They resting. They taking a rest. Hallelujah. Praise the name of... So therefore, this is before the law was established on tablets. We are seeing and we're proving and we're building that a Shabbat was taken before the law was put on tablets. Let's continue to build. All right. So everything that was created by Yah was commanded to rest on the Sabbath. We have to understand that the Sabbath was a gift from Yah. Listen, the Sabbath wasn't no, no, no ill thing or no bad thing. It was a good thing. It wasn't a punishment, but it was a time for Adam and Eve to commune with Yah and be refreshed in his presence. And Genesis 2 and 3 says that Yah sanctified that day, a time of he hallowed it, a time of, of, of he set it apart. The act of sanctification consisted in a declaration that that day was holy. Now, again, that day, it was a declaration. He declared that that day shall be set apart. That day was holy or set apart for holy purposes and worship. A declaration is something that is spoken openly. When you make a declaration, you don't just keep it aside. I declare I'm not doing this no more. Declaring is, is telling everybody it's declaring to you i'm telling everybody this was a declaration of the sabbath so if it was a, de a declaration of the sabbath then the creation had to know if he declared it which means that adam and eve had to know what the mind of y'all was when it came to his sabbath hallelujah all right he they understood and they knew what y'all required of him of them they knew all creation knew even though the law was not on tablets they knew it was a oral understanding it was an oral declaration of what y'all required from himself all right a rejection of the sabbath is a rejection of y'all and it, it opens wide the door for all manner of false doctrines like we have now hallelujah yahoo said yahusha said if you love me you do what you do what if you love keep my commandments? Keep the commandments. You'll keep my commandments. Some weeks ago, Mr. Ka, we established that the law was very much alive before Mount Sinai. And we are proving it again today. The law came from the mind of Yah to men orally, spoken orally, two tablets, then it was written on the tables of our hearts. That was the order of the law. Hallelujah. Yes, the law was moving and circulating orally. They knew what y'all required creation understood and knew as we're proving right now. This is something the Christian church does not want to come to grips with. They don't want to admit the law was connected to creation. And we know the Sabbath is connected to the law. Why did Adam and Eve get kicked out of the garden? Why did they get kicked out? They because broke they his, broke what? His what law. Say, Cuz? They broke the law. They broke his law. They broke his mm -hmm. commandment. He put. Right. He, he broke. They broke his commandment. They broke right. his law. What does it say? Genesis two fifteen. And the and and Elohim Yahuwah took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and keep it. As we said, that word dress is abad in Hebrew, which means he put them in there to work, to get your behind in there, and you make sure that this garden is straight. That's your job. That's why you created it. Listen, you can do what you want to do. Don't eat from that tree. That was the law. And the Lord commanded 
a man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest uh, freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of. For in that day thou eatest, thou shalt surely die. What was this? It was a commandment. It was a law that he gave to Adam. He understood that. He understood the law. So when you break the law, what happens? Die. You die. The wages, the wages of sin. Of sin. What? Death. Death. Come on here. We building. We proving all things today, Miss McCoy. Hallelujah. Boy, boy, real quick question. Yes, boy, sir. I have a question, real quick. Um, so <clears throat> it just hit me as, as soon as you said it. You know, y'all said you can eat from every tree but this one. So I know that's the knowledge of good and evil. But like, what is what is that uh, phrase for good and evil? Is that saying sin? Because it goes back to Romans six twenty three, where they say uh, the wages of sin is death. And in the garden, he said, if you eat from this tree, you'll surely you'll die. So my question is, what exactly does that phrase mean? The wages of sin is death. Yeah, is no, no. What, yeah, yeah. Hold, hold on, real quick. I'm on my uh, headphones. Give me one minute. All right, can you hear me better? That's way better. All right, perfect, perfect. Yeah, so um, you just said that y'all said in the garden you can eat from every tree, but if you eat from, you know, this tree of uh, knowledge of good and evil, then you'll die. Mm -hmm. And based off of Romans 6, 23, we know that the wages of sin is death. So my question for you is, um, what does that phrase, like, knowledge of good and evil actually mean? Like, what was that tree leading towards? Um, basically, my understanding is that that tree of the knowledge of good and evil was something that that will open him up to something that y'all didn't want him to know at that present time. Oh, this is the present time. Okay, I got you. I got you. Right. That it, it was it, again. It's it's a commandment, and it was also mm -hmm. a, a testing as well. Mm -hmm. It's like when you're a father. There's certain things that you tell your children. You give them laws in your home. You know, it's the mm -hmm. test to see where they're at. Yep. So that was the same thing that was applied there. So again, so, did someone say something. All right. So, so the, the wages, yeah, the wages of sin is death, and and the gift of Yah is eternal life. So we know in every covenant that men, uh, with men, Yah established the terms and the conditions. So in every covenant, every covenant, Yah only deals in what with man. He only deals with covenants. So therefore, he was dealing with uh, Adam in covenant, with the Edenic covenant, and he was dealing uh, with mankind in covenants. So in every covenant, there is the terms and conditions of the covenant, and the terms and the conditions are his laws. Genesis 6 and 8 and 9 says, Noah found grace and favor in the sight of Yah. Why? Why did he find grace and favor? Because he was keeping the oral law. He wasn't out there uh, preaching, it's going to rain, y'all. Nah. Like they told us in church, you better get ready. It's going to rain now. Nah. It's about to be a flood <laughs> on the earth. Nah. And God's getting ready to rain down. He wasn't doing that. Where is that at? That's not in the Bible. It's not there. The Bible says what? 2 Peter 2 and 5, that he was a preacher of what? Brandon? Of righteousness. He was a preacher of righteousness. So therefore, when y'all called him, y'all gave and, and told him, I'm getting ready to destroy this place. He didn't tell him, because listen, they didn't even know what rain was. The only thing they knew was, was do. They didn't know what rain was. He said, I'm getting ready. Listen, I want you to build an ark because I'm getting ready to destroy all flesh before me. So therefore, all Noah was preaching. He had been preaching righteousness. Righteous as it says. What is what the righteousness was he preaching? What he foreknew to be right. What was passed down to him orally. That's all he could preach. What he knew that righteousness was. How did he know what righteousness was? Because righteousness was passed down. And there was an understanding of what righteousness was. He wasn't preaching man. They never heard of rain because it never rained on the earth. So all Noah was what y'all said. Build an ark.
because I'm about to destroy this place. But look at what he says in chapter 6, 18 of Noah. Look what he says. But with thee, would I establish my covenant? Good, y'all almighty. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy son's wife with thee. Let's see what that means in covenant, in context. He said, I'm going to establish my covenant with you, Noah. What did he mean by that? When he says, I'm going to establish my covenant with you. Anybody know what he means by that? What does he mean by saying, I'm going to establish my covenant with you? What does establish mean? What do you mean by establish? Set up. Huh? He was going to set up an agreement. Right. Exactly. He's going to establish my covenant. Let's, 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 let's see the reality. Let's, let's, let's dig here. Let's see. Let's go to the Hebrew. That word establish from the Hebrew is quam. Strong's H6965. And it means to rise, stand up, rise up, stand up. All right. And it means to maintain oneself, to be established, be confirmed, to stand, endure, to be fixed, to be valid, to confirm or ratify, establish. Uh oh. Wait a minute. In the context of what we were just talking about, it means to confirm. He said, I'm establishing you, Noah, which means to confirm, ratify. What it says here, to rise, be clearer, confirm. Oh, I like this. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> so basically what he was saying in you, Noah, I'm going to establish my covenant. I'm going to continue my covenant in you. I'm going to confirm this covenant with you. I'm going to ratify that in you. I'm going to make it clear in you. And you continue in you. Continue from what, though, Ms. Fakar? Continue say from that? what? What he continued for what was already was known out there law. for what Yah established as his law, his original covenant. What he established from the beginning. What he established. Yeah, yes, go ahead. Big preset right there. Psalms 119 89. Forever Yahuwah, your word is established in the heavens. Come on. Come on, Brandon. Yes, sir. Same preset. I'm brand new. Let's go. Yes. So he continued the covenant. So in order for a covenant to be continued, there's laws and conditions and terms that come with every covenant. You can't have no covenant without any law or any terms and condition. So therefore, the Sabbath was created from the beginning. It was his law. It was the law of the earth. Those that work, there is a Sabbath for you. So therefore, orally, orally, they understood what Yah want because he spoke it orally and it was passed down from every covenant to every covenant. Hallelujah. So in, so in that context, you see, Yah wanted to continue. He wanted to ratify, to raise up, Mr. God, or to make clear and confirm what Noah already knew, which was passed down to him through the line of Seth. Good Yah Almighty. Hallelujah. Who was Seth? Seth was the son of Adam and Eve after Cain rose up and killed his brother. Seth was the godly seed. And from that seed came Noah. Good Yah Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Self established. Hallelujah. He established the godly life after sin came in and, uh, and murder came in. 
They had another son that carried on the seed. Hallelujah. So that means they were keeping the Sabbath through the seed of Seth. Y'all ain't going to help me today. I feel preaching. Yeah. More, more. Yes. R real quick on that point that you just made. Um, according to the table of nations, which is Genesis 10, Adam actually lived long enough to, to know. <laughs> yeah, he, he lived long enough to know Limit, which was Noah's father. So he, there's, at least, there's at least 100 years there where Adam is teaching Noah's father. Bring so everybody, be, everybody between Adam and Lamech knew, they, they all knew Adam fairly well for at least a couple hundred years. Exactly. Good, huh? So they, so, so what, what, uh, Ak Nehemiah is saying, Adam Straight from God to, to Adam to limit. So Noah, Noah is only, he's, it's not like he's hearing this third hand. He's, he's getting super close to the source. Exactly. Exactly. So what Nehemiah is saying, Adam lived 969 years. And all and these they were overlapping each other. They were living in their different time frames, you know. So they was around that long for them to know. Because I told you what Yah is saying. That's what Nehemiah is saying. They lived long enough to talk person to person for them to know what was the what was the expect expectation from Yah. <laughs> good Yah. Thank you for bringing that out, Nehemiah. That's good. All right. It was the covenant which included Yah's law and the Sabbath is a part of that law from creation. While we know nothing was written on stone tablets, we see the law was established. Listen, first John three and four says sin is what is the transgression of the law of Yah. They had to know the law because when Cain murdered Abel, Yah cursed Cain. He cursed him. He cursed her for murder. So, so if, if, if the tablets was not there yet, and we know that, that one of the commandments uh, during the time of Moses was thou shalt not kill, and Cain killed Abel and Yah cursed him, he cursed him, why? Because he knew that was wrong to do. That was a law. <laughs> Yah, Yah is, is, is a just Elohim. He does not hold people accountable without them knowing what is required of them. He's a just y'all. Go ahead, Brandy. Now, I just said work. Go ahead, man. Oh, yeah, he, he doesn't hold you accountable when you're not knowing. He's a just y'all. Go ahead, Brandy. Uh, I just said work. Go ahead, man. Yeah, he, he hold you accountable He's a just y'all. He's a just king. Hallelujah. When we stand before uh, or, or when after uh, the time of the New Jerusalem, according to Revelations 21 and 22. And, and the people have to stand before the white right throne judgment. They already know that they're what they have done. They know that they, they didn't keep the law. They know they weren't doing right. But still yet, y'all still let them know as a just y'all what they did and showed in them life, their life before them. That's a just y'all. Hallelujah. So therefore he would never, ever, judge you or do anything to you without you understanding the requirements first. Romans 4, 15, where there is what? Where there is no law, there is no sin. There is no transgression. Hallelujah. So therefore, where there is no law, there is no sin. Obviously, when Cain cured Abel, there was a law because Yah cursed him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue to build. When Joseph was in the house of Potiphar, his wife tried to seduce him and sleep with him. What did Joseph say? Verse 9, Genesis 39 and 9. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither have he kept back anything from me but thee, because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness to Potiphar? And what? And do what? Brandon, what did it say? And do what? Against y'all? Transgress his law. And sin. sin. <laughs> he said, I can't sleep with you, baby girl. My, my, I, 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 you know, you look good. I want to rock with you. You look good. But I can't sin. Sin is the transgression of the law. Googly moogly. Sin is the transgression of the law, yeah. So therefore, there's an understanding that I have. 
even though I'm in Egypt and y'all have different ways, but I understand this, the Yah I serve has a law and this is sin according to him. It's against his law. So if I do this, I'm going to sin against the law. It wasn't on tablets yet. It wasn't on tablets, but there still was a law that they understood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What about Abraham? Come on, Abraham. Uh, Genesis 26, starting at verse 4. And I will make thee to multiply as the stars of heaven. This is the covenant he's telling to Abraham. And will give unto thee. I see all these countries, and then I see shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Come on, verse 5. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice. Uh oh, watch out, watch out. Hold on to your seats. Put your seatbelt on. Put your seatbelt on. Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments my statues, and my laws. What in the world is Abraham know anything about keeping the laws, statues, and commandments before the stone tablets, before the era of Moses? He was keeping what? He was keeping the laws. And if you look in the Apocrypha, we don't have time for it today, but if you look in the Apocrypha, you'll see that he was keeping feast days and the Sabbaths. In the book of Jubilees and these different ones in the Apocrypha. Yes, sir. But he understood. He was keeping the laws, the feast days. And guess what, Ms. Rika? He was keeping the Shabbat because it's a part of the law. Hallelujah. Abraham was keeping Yah's progressive law, which included the Sabbath from creation. I'm almost done, Ms. Rika, but I feel the Ruach HaKadosh. I'm feeling good right now. Hallelujah. The Most High is very systematic. He keeps to his pattern. Malachi 3 and 6 says, I am Elohim, I change it not. The book of Revelation speaks of the new Jerusalem. In chapter 21, it says this, verse 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is just talking. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. They were passed away, which means that Yah was in his creative pattern in the book of Revelations. He said, a new heaven, a new earth, because the first one had passed away, which means he's back to creative mode. He's back to Genesis 1 and 2, okay? Uh, and it says, I, I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yah out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Verse 3. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yah is with men, and he will dwell with them. Come on, what is that? What feast state is that? Does that line up with what feast state does? Come on here. What more demon is that? Huh? That's Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Tabernacles. Hallelujah. And we understand. In John chapter 7, that Yahusha, Brandon, you, you pointed it out this week, that Yahusha was keeping the feast days in John chapter 7. Hallelujah. That's a nugget. Verse 4, and Yah shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. What's happening right here in Moray Stone? What is happening? What is happening? What, what's, what does this mean? What's going on here? It means that during this time frame of the end, things are reverting back to how it was in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, Nehemiah. We're going to back to how it was a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth were passed away. We're going back to how it was in the, in the Garden of Eden. There was no tears. There was no pain and there was no sorrow. There was no crying in the, in the, in the Garden of Eden. So what's happening is, Yah is going back to his creative mode. We're going back to Eden. Come on here, uh, Donald Lawrence. We're going back. Come on, let's bring this out. We see that the verbiage in Isaiah chapter 65, 17 and 19 is the same. 
Isaiah 65 mirrors what was said in Revelations 21. All right, let's see. Verse 17, for behold, I create a new heavens and new earth. Come on here. Come on, harmonize scriptures. And the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Verse 18, but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. He's at the creative mode again, just like he was in creation. He was creative. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. Verse 19, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem, hallelujah, and joy in my people, and the voice of weeping shall no more be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. That sounds like Eden. That sounds like back to Eden, hallelujah. What else does Isaiah prophesy about the new Jerusalem? Verse 22, for as the new heavens and the new earth, which I shall make, remain before me, said Elohim. So shall your seed and your name remain, Israel. We shall remain, our seed, our names, we shall remain. And it shall come to pass, hallelujah, catch this right here. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon, hallelujah, to another new moon. What did the new moons identify from earlier? It, uh, it identified a new month from one new moon to another new moon. And from one Sabbath to another, wait a minute, wait a minute, from one Sabbath to another, which means creation in, that we're reading right now is going back to how it was in Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. And he's in creative mode as he was in the beginning. And the Sabbath is still there. As it was in the days of beginning, the Sabbath was established for men. We shall keep the Sabbath in the new Jerusalem. Nothing has changed. Hallelujah. Nothing will change. What was in the beginning shall be. The Bible says in Isaiah 46 and 10, if you want to understand the end of the thing, you have to do what? You have hallelujah. to go back to the beginning of the thing. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, hallelujah, said there's nothing new under the sun. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. So we kept the Sabbath from the beginning. It was his law. In the new Jerusalem, we shall keep the Sabbath. And what shall happen? Shall all flesh come to worship before me, said Elohim. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses, carcasses of men that have transgressed against me. They didn't keep my law. They didn't keep my feast days. They didn't keep what I established. Hallelujah. For their worm shall not die. Neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be at horn unto all flesh. They transgressed the law of Yah. Sin is a transgression of the law of Yah. We understand Matthew 7 and 21 says, Yah, I, I, I heal people in your name. Yah, I, I heal the sick in your name. I, I prophesy in your name. But he said, listen, turn from me. I never knew you, for you are a worker of iniquity. That word iniquity is strong's. 458, and it means lawlessness. It's the Greek word anomia, which means lawless. So when you are lawless, you shall be rejected from entering in. Hallelujah. We're bringing it out today. Hallelujah. I'm about done, Mr. McCall. This is my last slide. Hallelujah. But I feel the spirit of the most high God. Hallelujah. 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 Exodus 20, uh, chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. It says this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor. This is during the time of Moses. This is during the time of the children of Israel, a people that he had chosen to give his law to, a group of people. Before then, there was no, in the creation time, there was not no, no children of Israel. Hallelujah. It was man uh, uh, and God's covenant being passed down through man. But during the time, of this time, this is the children of Israel, our ancestors. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Six days thou shalt thou labor and do all work. Do all work. Hallelujah. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of Elohim thy Yah. In it thou shalt not do any work. 
thou, nor thy sons, nor thy daughter, thy men servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle. Listen, your animals, sit your behind down on this day, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Even the people that was connected to themselves, it was one law for the stranger as well as the native born. If they came out of Egypt with Israel, guess what? Sit your behind down on the Sabbath as well. Hallelujah. And uh, verse 11 says this, for in six days, Elohim made heaven and earth, the sea and all that them is, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, Elohim blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Now they say this, and I'm, I'm closing right here. I promise you I'm done after this. They say this in Christianity. They say, again, that the law was given at Mount Sinai, the Sinai covenant. And at that time, they were given a Sabbath because they did not have any rest in the bondage of Egypt. And from that standpoint, only the Jews or the, or the children of Israel that was in Egypt they were the only ones that were able to keep that Sabbath. And when Yahusha came and died on the stake, then there's no more Sabbath no more. You don't have to keep it as meaningless as they say. But I have, I have a couple of things to say with that, okay? First of all, remember the Sabbath. Now, remember goes backwards. If he's talking to the children of Israel and he says, remember, Remember goes back, not forth. Remember. He's telling them, remember. So obviously, their ancestors, through the oral law, knew about the Sabbath. And he's telling them to remember the day of creation. The day, because they knew their history. They knew their history. It was passed down. As Nehemiah said, these people overlap these patriarchs overlapped each other in their living so they were there so they understood their history so he said remember remember takes you back to creation remember now that you're out of egypt remember what was given at creation hallelujah furthermore and it gets that thought process that it was only given to the children of israel and it was meaningless and that when when they say Jesus came to the cross and no longer do we have to keep the Sabbath no more. If that was the case and they were not keeping the Sabbath no more, how come in 321 AD, Constantine found it in his heart to remove it? If it wasn't uh, an operation, it was meaningless. Why did he take the time to remove it? Obviously, it was still going on. That's why he changed it to Sunday. Because it had some kind of validity. Hallelujah. So that goes against that. Oh, this was only for the children of Israel and only people that was in the, uh, Egypt. And when Jesus came into the cross, no. For him to change something like he did in 321, it had to be an operation. Hallelujah. And furthermore, you could use that too, remember, because y'all knew as they went forth that Constantine was going to try to take that Sabbath away from them and change it to another day. 